It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Grand Canyon head and women's tennis coach, Coach Kate Adamovich. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. Thank you for having me, Brandon. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college women's tennis? Yeah, so after I graduated from Oklahoma State, um, I was kind of in a, in a crossroad, whether I want to go play professionally or um, get into college coaching. I always kind of knew once I'm done with my career, I'm going to get into coaching eventually. But um, there were some things outside my control that played a key in making this decision. And, uh, you know, shortly after I graduated, I got an offer from Cincinnati to be their assistant coach. And uh, I could not say no um, because I really fell in love with college tennis. And um, that's how everything started. What was that experience like going to Oklahoma State and getting to play for the women's tennis program for the Cowgirls? It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I tell all my players, you know, college athletics is once in a lifetime opportunity. But playing for Oklahoma State and uh, being part of that athletic department, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity on steroids. Um, so uh, it's the best four or five years of my life. Um, I'm so grateful for everything and everyone I got to know there. It, it, it shaped me into a person uh, I am today, really, my experience there. So, what was that? What was that feeling like getting to put on that cowgirls uniform for the first time? Well, to be honest, um, I got in in January uh, to Oklahoma State, and uh, that whole first semester was kind of like a blank for me. Uh, it just happened so fast. I remember getting to Stillwater and literally three days later, I had a first coll collegiate match and um, it did not go very well, right? But the more uh, the more I kind of got to be present, the more I got into everything, the more I realized how great this is and how amazing the opportunity is that I get to put on a uniform uh, and go out there and compete for something really bigger than myself. Um, so, um, and the longer I was there, uh, the more important that became to me, to the opportunity to put it on. What was that experience like in getting to compete in the Big 12? Uh, it was um, uh, at that time, you know, uh, Big 12 in Oklahoma State, we had some really good teams. I mean, Texas and uh, Texas Tech was really doing well, OU and then us. It was highly competitive. Um, very taxing on your mentally and physically, really going back to back, uh, playing at the tough conference. And then prior to that, having a really um, hard uh, non-conference schedule, it was really a high level of tennis, um, high level of the, uh, pressure as well. And uh, that's, that's kind of what you're there for, um, to be able to play matches like that uh, and compete at such a high level. As a collegiate athlete, what was that experience like getting to play against teams like Texas and Oklahoma? I mean, Texas, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, they're one of the biggest uh, athletic departments in the country. Um, and, uh, you know, getting getting to compete, you know, as an international person, I, I didn't really know much about it. It came to me maybe like a year or two later, once I got to know more about college athletics and uh, in general, but um, really for me at that moment when I played against them, it didn't, it didn't really matter to me whether it's Texas, Texas Tech, anybody else, really. I approach the same match the same, but once you beat them, uh, there's just a little bit of a feeling, like a little bit better feeling once you beat them. Of course, what was that experience like, as you said, being an international student and getting to play for Oklahoma? I think... Uh, 
for international student athletes, um, it, it, the transition can be very hard. For me personally, it wasn't just because my my experience prior to college, um, I, I moved quite a lot for tennis and uh, was already living abroad. Uh, but still, coming in here and transitioning from professional junior tennis into college and getting into a college athletic system, it's a huge change. Um, and it was for me, it took me, it took me some time to get used to it and adapt. Um, but um, I, luckily I had coaches who were uh, patient with me and teammates who were supportive. And that's, that's the biggest thing. That's the most important thing to have those two. And once you have those two, the transition becomes a little bit smoother, not easier, just smoother. Coming out of college, what was that like in getting started becoming an assistant coach for Cincinnati Bearcats? I think my, you know, my first uh, first year at Cincinnati as an assistant coach, it was more about discovering uh, about myself and who I want to be as a coach. Uh, I knew I, I knew a lot on what it takes to be a, a college coach, um, but it was more about discovering how I want to approach the game, how I want to approach the relationship with players and just college tennis in a different mindset. So it took me, you know, first year or so were just about that, really learning more about myself, learning the ways I can transition my knowledge onto players uh, and help them grow as people and as tennis players. And, uh, you know, then last year it was just kind of same thing, but in a way of um, developing those skills. And now at the moment it's, it's kind of, it's just making sure you, you learn new things and develop. But the first uh, couple of years in Cincinnati was just all about discovering more about who I want to be as a coach. Of course, what was that experience like going to Missouri, Columbia to become an assistant coach? I wasn't that, there long. I wasn't there for too long. Uh, I spent only a year in Mizzou. And, you know, like Cincinnati, like I said, was more about discovering more who I want to be as a coach. Missouri was more about discovering what I don't want to be as a coach and uh, learning uh, really uh, a teaching lesson that grass isn't always greener on the other side. Uh, that was uh, that was Missouri for me. And, you know, luckily during that one year there, uh, I got to meet some incredible players and incredible coaches that I'm, I'm really grateful and that helped me transition into my current role. Of course, what was that transition like from going from being an assistant coach for two schools to then getting to run your own program and become a head coach? It was cool. Um, at first, you know, um, you never feel ready to take on a, on a head coach role. No matter how many years of experience you have as an assistant coach, uh, there is just a certain amount of pressure that comes as being a head coach. And I remember talking to some of my mentors and I was like, I just don't feel I'm ready yet you know as a as a 28 29 at 28 at that time i was like i just don't feel like I'm, I'm ready to i know what it takes i know what to do i know how to do it but i don't feel ready and my mentor told me you will never feel ready until you start doing it so i was like huh that's actually a great advice and um i was like the only way to learn is by doing it um and um the transition was um actually much more smooth than I thought it would be. And luckily, you know, I had a great support here at Grand Canyon, great athletic department and great uh, staff. Um, and my players were just um, a rock stars. So the, the transition was super easy because of them. Of course, coming to Grand Canyon, what was that feeling like becoming a head coach for the first time and getting to run your own program? Uh, I think that every, every coach wants wants to become a head coach at some point, right? You want to have your own program and you want to run things your way. Um, so obviously having this opportunity, um, I knew that um, there is a level of pressure that comes just being in this world, like I said, and um, just, uh, just embracing it, not running away, not being scared. And, uh, you know, knowing that the years before of discovering things the way I want to be and things that I don't want to do and stuff like that really made this um, kind of uh, um, even more special in, in a way. What was that feeling like the first time you got to put on that GCU polo for the tennis program? Um, 
it was fun. It was kind of same as Oklahoma State. I was like, wow, this is, this is. I get to say this is kind of uh, um, our program here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the driver, and um, it was, um, it was a sense of just being proud of myself and the work I put in to be to put myself in in, in this position. As a head coach, what has that been like getting to build the coaching staff and the team around you? I think I I came in a situation here where a majority of players were recruited by a former coach. I got to bring just uh, uh, two players of my own. Um, and, and that was not the issue for me uh, because regardless of who the players uh, are and whether you recruit them or not, um, you you have to know what you want your program to look like. Um, and bringing people to be part of that uh, and uh, really um, getting your players to believe in that was the biggest challenge. Uh, and it's always the uh, biggest challenge. So so it was, uh, it was cool, yeah. What was that feeling like the first time you got to step outside and then get to coach on the tennis court as a head coach? It didn't feel any different, to be honest. It, it didn't feel any different. It actually felt the same like it felt the first five years of stepping out there uh, as an assistant coach. Uh, I think college tennis is very special. Um, I, I think uh, college athletics in general, but there's just something very, very special about college tennis and coaching college tennis. The level of energy, the level of determination and hard work and um, competitiveness that goes into a college tennis match it's just incredible and every time going out there whether you're an assistant a volunteer or a head coach it shouldn't matter uh you should just be so proud to to be able to be in that position and just be grateful for it what is that game day atmosphere like for grand canyon on tennis match days uh, match atmosphere um it's very energetic uh, you know, we worked a lot on, on embracing that and having a good energy because, you know, like I said, college tennis, energy in college tennis is just so important. So uh, having that energy, making sure that we are having fun and also creating an environment for people who come to watch us and support us to for them to have fun is also uh, out of huge importance because it's not just us. Uh, we want to make sure that people who come and watch us also enjoy college athletics and college tennis. As a head coach, what are some of your game day routines and rituals like? Um, I would say um, I don't really have any rituals. Uh, it's kind of the same as every day, really. Wake up early, go to the gym, get a run. Uh, if, you are, if we are on the road, I, I have to make sure I get in a workout, like running workout mostly, um, do activation with my team, um, eat breakfast and uh, get ready for the match. Um, you know, for them, it, it's kind of the same. Um, we like to go to the match, it's to, to the side a little bit earlier, whether we're playing at home or away. We always get there like two hours before the match, just so we have fun and time um, to get through, you know, prepare preparation, mental and physical in order to play. So, but me personally, I don't really have any rituals besides I have to get in a workout before the match. Of course, well, as a young coach and a head coach, what has that been like keeping that balance between your players and you? Uh, it's, it hasn't been hard. Uh, I, I get this question quite a lot. And I, I got it even when I started, right, when I was only 24. And some of my players were only like 20, uh, were 21, 22. So that gap was even smaller than now. Now it's actually easier because now we are talking about eight to nine year gap. Uh, but I'm, I always say I'm so glad that I'm in this position right now because I can relate to my players. Um, if I need, uh, every player needs different thing. So as, as a head coach that been through their experience not that long ago, uh, six years in my case, it just helps them out, helps them out to understand, okay, like I've been in it not too long ago. I know how it feels. I can relate to you. I can relate to you mentally, emotionally, and physically. Um, and um, gaining that trust, it's a little bit easier, I feel like, just because, um, you know, um, of the age. But at the same time, there there is also uh, a difficulties, right, when it comes to, like, 
age gap because now because we're so relatable there there could be some confusion uh but as long as you have a clear communication and clear boundaries with your players um i think uh i think it's cool that you can that you're young and you can relate to them who are some of the teams that you face in your conference each week in our conference, I think we had some good battles this year with UT Arlington and Tullerton State. Um, those two are top two teams. We are top, all three of us kind of one, two, and three. And, you know, both of our matches um, in the pre, pre, in the regular season and tournament were really uh, tough. Um, everything that college tennis is, we had it. Um, so one of those two teams, you know, we had uh, tough matches against UT RGV. Um, a lot of our teams are kind of spread out. Um, majority of teams are in Texas. And then there's us, uh, Seattle and Utah Tech, who are outside of Texas. So a lot of traveling, a lot of Texas teams, a lot of traveling to Texas. Um, but um, it's, been, it's been a good battle with them this year. Of course, what is that like getting to play those teams in Texas? And what is that road atmosphere like traveling all the way to Texas to play them? Um, I think playing on the road, it's more fun personally to me. It's way more fun than playing at home um, because you have a little bit of chip on the shoulder. You, you know there's going to be people um, screaming against you and supporting and you know you're going to have refs against you and just having that little bit of extra pressure, a little bit of that chip on the shoulder to prove something, I, I think it's more fun. Uh, and that was definitely for us, the case for us this year. You know, we... We started strong playing on the road, then we didn't, we had some difficulties, you know, we lost our um, three road matches uh, in, a, in a conference in Texas and, uh, you know, we had to kind of gather together and um, think through some things why this happened before the conference tournament and we did and um, yeah, it was good at the end. What is that like, obviously, having some of those Texas teams come to Grand Canyon and playing at your facility? I, I think um, there's no much difference. Like I said, you know, we have a good game day atmosphere here. We have a good support from our students, um, from our staff. They do a good job with preparing. Um, I think we have an advantage because of the weather. Um, weather is always going to be great here. Uh, so everybody that comes here, you know, you're going to get a sunny sunny and 70 plus water here so you're not gonna sometimes it gets a little windy but not like in texas when it's like 25 miles an hour wind and and 50 degrees uh uh weather but um so i think I, I think it's a great place to play of course what does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes looking to play collegiate tennis i think every coach has a different approach to recruiting uh, mine is very simple you know, I'm a coach that values relationships. So during that recruiting process, I just want to make sure that those players feel comfortable with me. Um, um, and that, that is the biggest thing. You know, there, there, there are characters that, we're, that I'm looking in, a, in a athletes that we're recruiting. Um, but, you know, it's kind of getting on the Zoom calls and getting on the WhatsApp calls and, you know, maybe making that call at 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Phoenix time because you're calling somebody that's in Europe uh, nine, ten hours ahead. Uh, but the recruiting process is just, uh, you just got to get them, get on a phone call, call them, and make sure they feel comfortable with you. Of course, what do you look at in those perspectives to athletes when out on the road recruiting them? I'm looking for their approach, right? Not not their approach just before the match because everybody's going to approach match seriously, right? You would hope uh, at that level. But you're looking at the little details about how do they warm up? How do they eat? Uh, how do they talk to themselves? How do they talk to their family, their coaches? Um, uh, what do they do before, five hours before the match? What do they do? Uh, did they wake up in time? Did they not? How are they detail-oriented players? That's what I'm looking for. Of course, there are other things like uh, tennis talent that you're looking for and skills, skill set. And, but I, I'm the coach that believes that the key is in details, success is in details and a lot of things. Um, and those things are important to me to see that players take every part of their life seriously. Because in order to grow 
as a tennis player, you can't just be good at one thing. You can't be just a good tennis player. You have to be a good student. You have to be a good person. You have to be a, a good uh, kid and daughter and uh, whatever. So it's 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 a whole thing. So the details matter. Of course, when those prospective student athletes come on the official visit, what does that look like coming to Grand Canyon? Oh, hmm. I don't want to give my secrets away. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's it's simple. Uh, I don't I don't like to use the um, 48 hour rule. I get them here for 24 hours and get them out of here uh, in time for their next visit or for them to go home. Um, you know, they come in here. I show them around. Um, then is I try, like I said, in those 24 hours to 48, you try to get to know them as much as you can, and them to get to know you as much as they can. Um, because that's the key. If they're going to come here and feel comfortable with me, that that's the most important thing for me. Uh, and then just showing them around. I mean, Phoenix is great. Our campus is beautiful. You know, like I said, warm weather. Um, so it's, um, it's a good visit to take. Of course, what is it like seeing those prospective student athletes fall in love with the tennis course that they'll be playing for the next four to five years? I think for seeing seeing the trust and believe that they have okay this is the place where i'm gonna come and i'm gonna dedicate my career i'm gonna put my career in your hands it, it says a lot about it right it says it means just a lot about you that somebody is, is trusting you that much with that whole career um and you cannot take that for granted right and and as a coach as a head coach your job is to do whatever it takes for them to put them in position of success because of that trust they put in you. As a head coach, what is it like seeing those prospective student athletes on freshman year putting on that tennis uniform for the first time? That's what they've been working for, right? This is why you came here. So now put it on and, and go enjoy it because, you know, those four years fly by and soon you know, before you know it, it's going to be your last time you're putting it on. So making sure they make the most out of every time they put it on um, is the biggest thing. What is that like seeing those seniors putting on that tennis uniform for the last time? It's a bittersweet moment. I remember for me, too, I was crying for a couple of hours before and then after uh, that. Um, but it's, it's a bittersweet moment because you're just closing one chapter, but the whole new chapter is opening up for you. So, and that whole new chapter is going to be great because of everything you've done in this one. So even though it's sad to know that college, your college career is done, this is the last time you're putting it on, but it just means more, you know, it means more and you should be, and they should be proud of everything uh, they've done up to, up to that moment. As a coach, what is it like seeing those players go on and playing professional tennis, whether it's the ATPs? Um, it's just seeing them, realizing their dreams, pursuing their dreams, you know, uh, this is why they come here. This is why they do this. This is why they play college tennis, all the work and all the tears and, and this is why you do it. Right. So you can see, you can see the smile in, in their face and you can see how happy they are to be able to be in this position and pursue it. It's just awesome. What's it like seeing those seniors get to go in and go into the corporate world or even into the coaching world after their collegiate career? It, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Every, every student athlete has a different goal, whether that some, some of them have, I'm going to come here and I'm going to use this as a tool to play professionally. Some of them want to go and pursue other career options, right? Whether that's coaching, whether that's corporate, whether that's continuing their education, whatever that might be, it doesn't matter because the process and the journey stays the same, right? And uh, the, the goal of our program here and my goal as, as a head coach is to prepare them during these four years they're here or what, however long they are here to be able to take whatever their road is next after they graduate. Um, so it, it's, it's the same. There is no difference whether you want to play professionally or um, pursue something else. Um, you have to do the work prior to that in order to be prepared. What are some of your future plans for Green Canyon moving forward? For Green Canyon? Mm -hmm. 
you know, we the standard of this program is going to be to make the NCAs, and uh, you know, we had a great first year here, winning WAC, winning into NCAs, and uh, you know, we have some great um, freshmen coming in, and we had our top three best player coming come back. So it's really exciting times here in Grand Canyon for women's tennis program. You know, uh, I think we started building something super special this year, and we're going to continue building that. And it's not going to be easy, uh, but we don't want it easy, right? Uh, so it's just I'm just excited to have. I mean, we just got done two days ago, three days ago, and I'm already can't wait for September to come and start practicing with them again. What advice would you give those future collegiate athletes looking to enter college tennis? um take it take it right like i a lot of tennis players uh especially international kids are a little bit oh if you go to college out you're done with your professional career that's completely opposite college tennis is changing tennis is changing um and uh this is amazing amazing opportunity to shape yourself to grow as a tennis player everything is resources everything that you get here will just help you for you in your future so instead of you know looking at it as a, what it was maybe 10 20 15 20 25 years ago it's completely different now uh, and i think everybody should explore this, that this option of coming to college what advice would you have those college athletes looking to go play professional tennis uh, advice i would give is uh, don't give up. It's not going to be easy. It's just about to get harder, right? Because uh, college tennis, playing college tennis and then switching to professional, it's not going to be as fun. Professional tennis is not a fun. College tennis is fun. Um, there is just knowing that it's more than you switching to that. It's not going to be, it's not going to be easy and making sure that, that they believe that everything they've done in these four years will, will, it, it, is what prepared them for this. So is go out and enjoy it and um, grind it out. What advice would you have those collegiate athletes looking to get into coaching? Uh, I would give them, I know college coaching sounds fun, um, but college coaching is, is not a job. Uh, at least I don't see it as a job. I see it as a life. Um, you have continuously year to year, you have eight lives that you have to take care of. They're trusting you with their careers, with their life. So it's not just showing up at 7 a.m., hitting a few tennis balls, making a few recruiting calls and going back home at 5, 6 p.m. It's a lifestyle, it's, it's life. And if you're not ready to to do that, um, don't get into it because that's that's the, that's the recipe for the failure. What advice would you give those assistant coaches looking to get started at coaching in college tennis? Assistant coaches to coach head coach, to get head mm -hmm. coaching job. Um, take it. Don't be afraid. Uh, just like I said at the beginning, uh, it, it is different. It's more pressure, but the only way to learn how to do things is by doing them. Um, so don't be afraid to take on the opportunity. What advice would you give those head coaches looking to build their own program and build their own legacy? Uh, learn, I would tell them to learn about themselves. This, try to really ask yourself, who do you want to be as a coach and as a mentor? Uh, you know, you can't, um, you can't hold uh, your team to a high standard without holding yourself to a high standard. Uh, so making sure, um, you know, to, to learn, to continuously discover about yourself and uh, continuously listen to your players. Um, that's what advice I would give them. You don't know it all. It's a continuous learning process and every year is different. Every, every generation that comes in, it's a different. And uh, your job is to teach them, um, and, but your job is also to learn from them. It's not just a one-way street. It's a continuous teaching and learning. Um, so I, I I, I learned a lot about from my players this year. Uh, I learned a lot from my players in the past four years as an assistant coach. So it's um, don't be afraid to learn. You don't know it all. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Grand Canyon Tennis Program app? 
you can find me on my Instagram, cat underscore Adamovich. Um, same thing on Twitter. Um, those two social media platforms are uh, where I'm kind of active. Where can my listeners find Grand King and Tennis at on social media? Uh, it's just you, Women's Tennis, and uh, it's same Instagram and Twitter and actually Facebook. Thank you again, Kat Adamovich, for your interview and best of luck in your future as the head women's tennis program coach at Grand Canyon. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram or Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk on our score, Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Kat Adamovich, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.